Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 1 of Book 6. Now this proposition states that if I have two triangles which have equal height, then the area of the two triangles, the ratio of the area of two triangles, will be equal to the ratio of their respective bases. So the area of ABC to ACD, the ratio of those two areas, will be equal to the ratio of BC to CD. Likewise, if I have two parallelograms, again with the same height, the ratio of the area of the two parallelograms will be equal to the ratio of their respective bases BC and CD. We're going to start our proof, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the triangles exclusively. So what we're going to do now is we're going to extend the base BC in one direction, and we're going to extend the, B, the base CD in a different direction. What direction doesn't matter, it's just easier to look at. And we are going to define points on along this base such that HG equals GB equals BC. And we're going to form some more points such that DK equals KL is equal to CD. Now you will note that I've done two extra points on this side and two extra points on this side. The number of segments or line segments that you extend does not matter. It's not part of the proof. It can be an arbitrary number of segments that you add onto the base. The only important bit is that they are all equal. So now I'm going to draw some more triangles. And let's look firstly at this, these blue triangles. The bases are all equal. The height for all of these triangles is equal or is the same. And consequently, the area of each of these triangles is equal. Proposition 38, book one. Likewise, let's look at all these pink triangles. The base is the same for all of them. The height is the same for all of them. So again, Proposition 38, sorry, Proposition 38, book one, states that the areas are all equal. So these blue triangles are are equal to each other and these pink triangles are equal to each other in area. Let's look at the blue triangles just for a moment. I can look at the triangle AHC. Now AHC is composed of, in this example, three triangles of equal size. The base of AHC is also composed of three segments, all of equal size, in this case, BC. No matter how many segments I put along, as long as each of these segments is equal, the area of the larger triangle that is formed will always be the same multiple of ABC as the base is of BC. Or in other words, AHC is equal to some number times the area of ABC and the base HC is the same multiple times the length of BC. And I can do the same thing for all the pink triangles. So ACL will be some multiple of ACD and CL will be the same multiple of CD. I've just rewritten everything here to be clean and tidy. So here are our conditions. Now, if HC were to equal CL and it has the same height, then this larger blue triangle would equal the larger pink triangle, Proposition 38, Book 1. If HC was less than CL, then the area of this larger blue triangle would be less 
than the area of the pink triangle. And also, if HC were larger than CL, then the area of the triangle HAC would be larger than the area of the larger pink triangle, which can be stated here. If you remember from Book 5, this means that if HC is less than CL, that implies that the triangle AHC is less than ACL. If HC equals CL, then AHC equals ACL. And finally, if HC is greater than CL, AHC would be greater than ACL. However, HC is equal to N times BC. So take HC and put N times BC. CL is equal to M times CD. So we write that here. Triangle AHC, replace that with n times abc and so on and so forth so we're doing what we're doing here is we are taking this guy and putting him in here we're taking this in here and this is getting a little bit messy but you can sort of see where i'm going and ahc was this one so we're putting it here and ACL is equal to this. As I said, this is getting kind of messy, but there you go. So that's what I've done, and we've ended up with this equation here, and I scribbled all over it. Let me erase it and do that again. So we've ended up with this, and this, of course, is very important because this is the definition of the equality of two ratios. If this condition is true, then by definition, the ratio of BC to CD is equal to the ratio of the area of the triangle ABC to the area of the triangle ACD. So this is our proof for triangles that the ratio of the bases is equal to the ratio of the areas of a triangle if they have the same height. Now let's show this for parallelograms. We have BC to CD is equal to the triangle ABC to ACD from the previous proof. The area of a parallelogram is twice the area of the triangle formed from it. So the area of EC is twice the area of the triangle ABC. And likewise, the area of this parallelogram is twice the area of the triangle ACD. But since EC and CF are the same multiple of the triangles, respective triangles, this does not impact the ratio between the two. Proposition 15 of Book 5. So the ratio of ABC to ACD will also be equal to the ratio of EC to CF. So let's rewrite this all again. We have the ratio of BC to CD is equal to the triangle ABC to the triangle ACD. I've just rewritten it. But here we have the, tri the ratio of the two triangles is also equal to the ratio of the parallelograms. And since the ratios are transitive, basically that means if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Since it is transitive, that's Proposition 11 of Book 5, we can just remove this from our equation and have that BC to CD is equal to the area EC to CF. And so here is the second part of our proof that the area, the ratios of the areas of the parallelogram is equal to the ratio of their bases, assuming that the height is the same.